bridges and uh, certain structures, which you can very easily see from space. Of course, with... I mean, what we mean by C can mean a bunch of different things, because after all, um, we have... Um, what is it? We have uh, super high-powered um, satellites, such as the ones they use for Google, uh, Google Earth, and ones that are far more powerful that are not, the pictures of which are not freely available, but, you know, really, like, you know, you build something in chop class and put it on your lawn, it can be seen from space by one of these satellites. I mean, I'm sure there are certain satellites that are so good these days that they can pick up, like, you know, little critters walking around on the floor or on the ground. I'm pretty sure they've gotten that good. So, it's pretty remarkable. Of course, information from those satellites are not going to become readily available because you could peep into just about anything with, um, with those. And while it would be interesting, like, to, to do that for countries like North Korea, uh, the satellite imagery for North Korea that's publicly available is not very good resolution. Like, once you zoom down, you can see buildings, but you can't see much detail about them. Imagine if just because of, like, I don't know, transparency reasons or whatever, they decided to... Um, give the highest resolution pictures available for all of North Korea. That would be pretty fascinating. But yeah, quite the uh, quite the dismal place. I don't need to tell don't need to tell you guys that. I'm sure that you know. And could uh, talk about Korea if I wanted to. However, um that is something that I leave for my talk show. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have my own talk show. Um, it's nothing, it's nothing like special. I mean, well, okay, it is something special because it's me and I'm wonderful and everyone should care about what I have to say, but what I mean is it's basically me talking to the camera. It's nothing super produced or anything. Oh, wow, we can actually see the sun rising. That's amazing. That's remarkable. But yeah, my show is called The All. Right now it's on Sudden Plant. It's kind of been on, I guess you could say, somewhat of a hiatus recently. But there are nine episodes where I talk about a lot of stuff. I don't talk about gaming over there, at least not in a direct way. But that might change in the future. Although, that show is mainly for politics, philosophy, world issues, and just about everything. I mean, it is called The All for a reason, and that reason is because I really do like to talk about everything there. And you know what? We're going to risk it. We're going to go into first-person mo mode because the sun is rising, which means this flickering is going to stop. And we're going to get a good view of our um, of our city streets. I'm hoping that this hearse at some point goes on a more broader um, trip and gives us a bit of a broader view of our of our city. But something tells me it's just going to poke around within our main city, which isn't such a terrible thing. I just wanted a little bit more uh, variety. All right, we're turning left. I guess we can also orient which way is east, west, or whatever, given where the sun is at a sunup. Obviously something you can't really tell if you have the day and night cycles turned on. But yeah, this is um, early morning time. And it's funny because you would think, like in the real world, people die where? In hospitals or at home most of the time? I mean, you do hear stories about people dropping dead at the supermarket or at a shopping center or at work or whatever, but they're much more rare than people who have actual, like, you know, people know that they're going to, they're sick and so they go to the hospital and things like that. So really, there should be a direct conga line of misery going between the hospital and the crematorium 
But that's not how it works in this game. Death is something that just happens to you. I guess there are no such thing as disease. Well, there are because we have hospitals, but they just um, death just is a sudden thing for everyone in this world. It just happens to you, no matter what you do. One day, boom, just fall down. Whereas, at least in real life, most people will have some form of warning. So, yeah, very interesting. And we are at one of the very corners of the city, as you can tell by the way you can see into the um, the country out there. But yeah, it's very nice. Man, the next city that we're going to be touring is going to be one with this big canyon in it. And I've got to say, um, it might be my favorite. I don't want to say that for sure. Because it has its problems, um, and, you know, specifically a, a few traffic snarls, and it definitely has a bit of a. Are we leaving our city now? Are we leaving? Are we going out? Now we're going back further in. Ah, oh well. But our uh, the next city is really um, neat, and it's also the first one where I really discovered how to do the rails the right way. Or how to do the rails at all, rather. Because I thought, you know, I was still living under the SimCity philosophy of you just place lines down and people... Or you just place stations down and people just use them. Which is not what happens. You have to place actual lines, obviously. But, did not know that at the young age of five months ago. <laughs> Alright, we are... Oh, no, we're not in traffic. I think we're heading deeper into our city. Although... Oh, no, we're not going that way. How far into the city can you go? Halfway, because once you're there, you hit the roundabout, and you're at the middle, and then you're going out of your city. Yeah, it is a somewhat a realistic design. Some, well, I don't know if for a master-planned um, city like this would really exist at IRL, but it also is kind of annoying that they don't always use the turf lanes that are there. But, I mean, hey, people get where they're going. There's not much traffic, so I guess I can't complain too much. All right, you guys and hats. Get to the building, get the guy. Turning around. And yeah, I'm, I think we're getting close to noon, so I'm thinking that to our right is where the east is. Oh, are we at the roundabout? Yes, sir, we are at the middle of our city. And hey, he's actually using one of the outer lanes. Isn't that amazing? In uh, all realism, like, the further right you would go is sooner you're turning. So people who would be turning now would be in the rightmost lane. And he's kind of actually following that in a way, because he went from the third lane to the second lane. And he's either going to turn here, or he's going to um, get in the outermost lane as he goes around. I guess we'll find out in a second. See? It actually makes sense. I'm actually um, somewhat impressed by that. See, the traffic AI, as dopey as it might be in many cases, actually does have redeeming qualities to it. It's quite lovely. Yes, and I'm sorry we didn't get this guy going all over the place and well out there and uh, all that. In fact, driving to the middle of our city plenty of times. You have to get your person. Sometimes... A person will actually add 10% or 20. It's not um, constant. It will change. So, no big deal for us. Okay. 
Doop -a -doop -a -doop. As you can see, if you go far enough, look far enough into the distance, that's one of our bridges that goes into the um, other side of the world. Is he going there? I doubt it. In fact, I think we are at our last, our last corpse. Going to our last corpse, which will lead him to um, going back to our, uh, going back to our crematorium, and hence the end of this adventure. Quite sad. And yeah, they don't use the term things like they're supposed to. Like, what are you doing, guy? But there we go. It gives you hope if just for a second that he's going to be leaving our city. But you just watch. He's going to turn here. And in fact, those are those is where our crematoriums are. And isn't this a great view? Yeah, this is one of the things I don't necessarily like about the first person view is you get stuff like that where you get right up behind the truck. But there's not really much you can do about that. I mean, if you really were sitting in the car, that is really what you would see. So that's kind of poopy. You know what? I'm not completely satisfied with that. We're going to do one more thing before we go. And that is... We are going to follow somebody. We are going to follow one more person. And in fact, we're going to follow one of these guys because we know that he's not going to be going simply back into the city. We're going to take this view. Ah, yes. Driving out into the country. This guy is, I think. He might be getting off one of these roads, but even that would be okay. No one blocking the view. Just a little scooter. This is what it's meant to be. Those stupid airplanes circling like uh, vultures. It's kind of funny because in real life, airline pilots are some of the most competent, well-trained people that you will ever see. Which is completely appropriate considering what would happen if they weren't. But consider this. There hasn't been a major... There hasn't been a single fatality from any major airline in the United States in 15 years, I don't think. And when you consider how many flights take off every single day in the U.S., literally thousands, and um, how many uh, how many uh, days are in 15 years, that's literally millions of flights that have all taken off and landed successfully without anyone um, dying. It's remarkable. It really is true that flying in a plane is safer than driving or walking or anything. Like, you are more likely to get to die in a car crash on your way to work than you are to, um, you know, die in a plane. Much more like like thousands of times more likely. It's quite remarkable. I know people have a fear of flying. Some people do. And it doesn't really have anything to do with rationality. You know, it's just like one of those, um, one of those fears, it's one of those irrational fears, which I can understand, but I don't, I've never had a fear of flying. I don't get to do it that often, as you might imagine. I just don't have that much money to go on trips and places, but I just really love it. And the last time I flew was to St. Louis for a wedding, so, you know, nice, positive reason to fly somewhere, and, um, for the first time in my life, I got a window seat, and it was not cloudy. So, flying between Philadelphia and um, St. Louis, you get to see the the majesty of the Midwest outside of your window. And it really reali makes you realize just how huge the Earth is. Like, I'm only seeing a small slice, and it just goes on and on and on. It's remarkable, you know? It's quite wonderful. I gotta say, I like it a lot. And, um, yeah, I mean, I know it can be annoying flying, like, long distances, but it's like a two-hour flight between two cities in the same country. Very simple. Very easy. 
and very pleasurable, at least I find. Alright, so here we go. I'm tired of these damn pop-ups. So we're back on the other side here, and we'll see where this buddy goes. He could uh, scoot over at any time to um, get on any of these exit ramps. We will find out. And he won't go all the way back to the highway, because otherwise he would have just stayed on that. Oh, traffic time. Traffic jam. Man, I sure, I sure hope you like this view. Yeah, like I said, far from perfect. Just on the way home today, I had to go to the store and do a few things on the way home from work, which made me take a different route than usual, which made me go over a railroad track. Um, there is a road here, which is a very small road that nonetheless has a massive amount of traffic on it. Just because there's to go out of your way to avoid that road would be kind of productive. But um, there's a railroad crossing that has one of those rail lines. You know what? Screw it. One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. But yeah, we um, had a train go by and... It was one of those junction lines where the train would go from one line to the other. It took us really, really slow. And so it was a long wait, and then a, just a huge throng of people. Really annoying. All right, let's see where this guy goes. He's, al he's already on the uh, local um, portion of the highway. Or she, rather. It's Mary Chapman. Yeah, this is the um, the one-way road that was put down by the um, person who made this map, which I think is a kind of a silly thing to have, but hey, you know, it's uh, what the maker decided to do, and I'm not going to um, double-guess the uh, maker. Cross those tracks. And I think it's also silly to have there would not be um there would not be lamp posts along this road IRL, you know. It just wouldn't happen. But I think I see our destination over there to our left. I mean there's nowhere else to go except out of the city, which isn't where this person's going, because it would say driving out of the city if that was true. All right, like I thought, turning left. Oh no, the um, edge of the city is outside of the water boundaries. Oh, it's so embarrassing. So many little things about the city that I I know better now, but I didn't know better at the time. Obviously, a rail station over there. That's what the people were walking from. solar panels on that guy's roof, which I'm sure is uh, very appropriate. Interesting, we haven't had rain. I mean, we are in a desert, but I don't think the game takes that into account. Although, you could say it's a happy coincidence. Although, I kind of would have liked to see it. But, that doesn't matter, because I think we are here. We've got to be. We're at the very, uh, we've pretty much gone through this whole small town. All these nice little houses and little pink houses, as the um, the great John Mellencamp would uh, would say. Yeah, it's just parking now. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. And it always snaps you back to where you originally were, which is kind of annoying. But I can do this. Whoop, there we are. That's where we are. Okay. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this few videos. If you find this to be interesting, if you find it to be boring, whatever you think, please tell me. Um, and I'll see you guys again soon for 
more cities. So long.